I have recently realized that digital nomading is basically just regular traveling but you also get to feel guilty about not working. Suddenly, My past two weeks in China have been a total whirlwind with endless steps, breathtaking sights while still trying to squeeze in some gym sessions and work sessions in between. And I'll be honest, the work-life balance is not balancing at this point. The development of my JavaScript course website is so behind. I haven't uploaded a video since the past month. My body is super tired and yes, I am mildly freaking out. But here's the plan. Why coding while I explore the city of Shenzhen? Will it work? I have no idea. But at least I'll get to touch some grass or maybe just the concrete outside of the 7-Eleven. Wipe coding is a term that was coined by Andre Garpathy. So what this means is instead of you writing the code manually, you let AI write the code for you with the help of natural language instructions. In this video, I'm going to try it out with the help of Lovable and see how quickly I can build a website from scratch. Hopefully it's going to save me a lot of time, which I can then use to explore the city. Let's hit the pause here for a bit. If you've watched my last video, then you would know that I hired three different designers to design the same website. At the end of the video, I picked this design as the winner, which I was going to implement. Now, instead of implementing that design as it is, I decided to pick a few features from the other designs that I liked and add them in this design. And this is how the final design is looking like. After the design was ready, I decided to order in some food for dinner. And here's the fun part about ordering food online in the hotels in China. So usually the delivery partners won't deliver at your doorstep. Instead, they would place the parcel inside of these robots and the robot will automatically take the elevator, reach your doorstep and upon reaching, you would either receive a text message or it would call on the landline inside of the room that the robot is here with your delivery and you can open the cabinet and collect your parcels. Once the design was ready, I was super excited to start building the website because this is my first time actually trying out wipe coding. I've used AI before for code auto completions or for debugging, but this time I'm not going to write any code and let AI build the entire thing. For this, the tool of my choice is going to be Lovable. In case you don't know what Lovable is, you can think of it as your personal AI full stack engineer. It allows you to build full stack applications without having any prior coding knowledge. It was another sunny day in Shenzhen, so I decided to work from my room itself in the afternoon before heading out in the evening to explore the Dongmen pedestrian street, which was right outside of my apartment building. With my design opened up in Figma, I headed on to lovable.dev. To be honest, I had not watched any tutorials before I started using the tool because it looked pretty straightforward. On the landing page, there's this simple chat box where you basically describe your prompt and it's going to build it for you. I noticed that there was this option using which you can directly export your Figma designs to code with the help of the Builder IO plugin. However, there's one catch, you need to use the auto layout feature while making your Figma designs. Now, since I did not make the original design myself, when I switched on the auto layout, it just messed up the entire design. So using this plugin was not for me. Next, I just exported the entire design as a PNG 
and attached it alongside my prompt. My prompt basically had four parts. The first one is the text tag that I want to use, which is Next.js and Tailwind CSS. The second one is an instruction to make it responsive. The third point describes the colors and the last one contained links to the fonts that I wanted to use. I was a bit skeptical if it was going to work and as it turns out, it did not. Even though the result was not quite bad, it was not what I wanted. I soon realized that one of the best practices in the lovable documentation actually tells you to avoid implementing five different things together and instead break your problem into smaller chunks. So the next approach that I took was to start implementing the design section by section. I started with the hero section first and used the same prompt. After a few minutes, it created a preview that looked something like this. It's a good starting point, but I needed to fix a couple of things here. So I started working on these different individual elements of my hero section one by one. For example, the text, the links, the banners and the images. Instead of using terms like padding or margin, I would just say increase the spacing or just increase the text size by a bit. Basically trying to get a feel of how it was to build a website as someone who did not have any coding experience. Along the way, I did realize that it was much easier for someone who knows how to code because depending upon your message, the prompts might take a few minutes to a few seconds to deliver the result. And if you're doing just basic stuff like increase the padding by 10 pixels or just playing around with different text sizes, I think it's much faster to do that manually within the code rather than waiting for AI to do it for you. In the first section, I was just trying to get a feel of how much detail to put into my prompts. Basically, just trying to figure out what's the most efficient way to construct my prompts. And this is how it was finally looking like. After I finished the first section, I decided to take a break to step outside. The sun was about to set, so I decided to visit a park side from where you could view the sunset. We waited for a bit and finally the sky started changing its color from blue to yellow to orange and finally to bright pink. After that, I headed back to my hotel, but along the way, I stopped at this lemon tea shop, which ended up being one of my favorite teas in this trip. At this point, if you're still watching this video, then you might be wondering if all of this was actually making me more productive or was it taking more time than it would have taken me to build it myself? Well, to find out the answer, I needed to finish the website first. The first section itself had took me a little less than two hours to build and it still needed some fixing. I observed that Lovable was able to give me anywhere from around 60 to 90% of what I wanted fairly quickly. But a lot of my time that was wasted was in the back and forth where I tried to reach the 100% mark. So I decided to combine my strength as a web developer and AI's speed to get the ultimate efficiency. So I changed my approach a little bit. Instead of trying to achieve a pixel perfect code, I just wanted something close to my design as quickly as possible. Once I had the layout for the entire website in place, then I would go over it, either fixing things myself by manually writing code or going over them again with Lovable. I started building the second section of my website, gave it a screenshot of the design, but this time I was a bit more descriptive with the prompt. Instead of just attaching the screenshot and asking Lovable to replicate the design, I described a few key features that I wanted it to implement in the prompt. This time, the result was pretty accurate to the design. I also love how it adds these slight interactions and animations here and there without asking. There's just two things to fix here. Add the right video and update the icon of this play button. But I've decided to do these small things myself and implement the bigger things first. I did the same with section number three, attached a screenshot of the design and described in the prompt what I wanted. The trickiest part of the section was the parallax scrolling. After a few minutes, this is the result that I got. It did implement the parallax scrolling, but it's not correct. The scrolling begins way too soon and ends way too soon as well. So I gave Lovable another chance to try and fix it, but it did not work and I did not want to waste any more time on the same thing. So I just asked it to remove the parallax scrolling completely and keep a manual default horizontal scroll instead. Next, I wanted to test if it could implement this tiny decorative element on top of the section heading. It didn't work and I decided to just move past it and implement it myself later on. Next, I moved on 
to these individual cards and asked it to implement this graphic over here. I got something close but not exact. Before moving on to the next section, I asked it to implement the last card and again I got about 90% of the original design. Again, gave it a screenshot of the design and described the features. This time, the result was actually quite different from the original design, but I actually liked Lovable's version better, so I decided to keep this one instead. Next was the projects section. This time, the implementation of the project section was a bit off from the original design. So step number one was to move these project cards in individual rows. Next, match the design of these project cards to the original card design. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So without wasting any more time, I just moved on to the next section. For the testimonials, I wanted it to implement a looping carousel of these testimonial cards. The implementation looked good, however the colors were a bit different. So I asked it to fix the color of the background and the title. And then to move the author information outside of these cards. Doing that somehow screwed up the widths of these testimonial cards, which then I had to ask Lovable to fix. But again, I don't know, I couldn't fix it, so I just left it as it is and decided to fix it myself because it was a simple change. There's one more feature that I wanted it to add to stop the motion of these testimonial cards if the user hovers over them. Finally, I had reached the footer. It implemented the marquee banner as well, but the background of the banners were not right and it had completely missed the blue part of the photo. So I asked it to remove the striped background from the banner and thought that I'll fix the colors and the font sizes myself. After that, I asked it to add the blue part of the photo section as well. And Lovable was smart enough to recognize that this button is similar to the button in the hero section. So it basically reused that component in the footer as well. But I wanted the color of the button here to be yellow instead of blue. So I asked it to update the color of the button in this section to be yellow. It did update the color of the button, but the change also reflected in the hero section. Again, this is something simple that I'll probably fix myself. I went back to the project section to see if I could fix the project's card one last time. And it was an improvement, but still not quite accurate. This time, it only took me about 40 more minutes to implement the rest of the sections. Now I'm back home trying to tell you this story, which by the way is still incomplete. I got a bit sick towards the end of my stay there, so I mostly just rested. But now I'm back home ready to pick up from where I left. I first synced my Lovable project in my GitHub account and then I cloned that repository locally to make some stylistic changes manually myself. So this included things like fixing the text sizes, fixing the positioning of these decorative elements and I also fixed the styling of the project cards. With that done out of the way, I only had a couple more things to fix. First was this enroll now button. So instead of doing those changes myself, I was feeling a bit lazy. So I just pushed my commits, which showed up as external commits inside of Lovable. And then I asked Lovable to fix that button for me. But this time my prompt was a bit more technical. So I asked it to create a new variant prop for this button so that the circular button component in the header makes use of the blue variant of the button and makes use of the yellow variant prop in the footer. Next, I wanted to fix these marquees. They were not seamlessly looping, so including these two banners in the hero section, in the footer section, as well as the carousel of the testimonial cards. They would end abruptly and start all over from the beginning instead of seamlessly looping around. 
so instead of asking it to fix its implementation i just asked it to implement it with the help of the react fast marquee package instead so it updated its implementation across the website and finally it worked then i moved on to the features section where i wanted to implement a parallax scrolling so this time again i made the prompt a bit more descriptive i gave it more details about the implementation so i asked it to use the framer motion package to implement the parallax scrolling i also described the offsets that it should use for the scrolling it pretty much got it right except a few css changes that i had to make after that there was one last major thing left the parallax scrolling in the project section so again in my prompt i asked it to make use of the framer motion package and all of the other details but it didn't work quite well this time so i had to make a few changes myself to get it working after that i did a few more changes to make it responsive so there was a lot of back and forth between me doing those commits and then a few commits being done by lovable as a next step i think i want to add a bit more animations and micro interactions in this website so let's do that adding in all these animations turned out to be way easier than i had expected most of the time i did not even specify the type of animation that i wanted instead i just said add some nice animation when this component comes into view and it delivered i also experimented with the idea of implementing a custom cursor and this is how the final website is now looking like going down me down so bad There you go. This is my entire process of building a website using vibe coding and I completely get the appeal. You can get a lot of the stuff done pretty quickly with the help of AI. You can check out this website or you can build your own with the help of Lovable using the link in the description box below. Let me know what are your thoughts on vibe coding. I'll see you guys in the next video.